Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Sorcery. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today as I try to get out of this well. I don't really know where to go because I can't do anything. Can I go up here? I can't do anything. It's just, I can't do absolutely nothing. Now I need to go through there, but I can't do... I, I, we Last episode we were just trying to cast our spells, and I'm gonna continue doing that, uh, but I think I'm gonna need to cast a fireball. So I have cat. Let's let's look once again. We have sus. We have fall. We have how, and we have sun. That's the spells we have cast. So how is to tell us about safe passage. Fall is for us not to fall. Sus is for us to um, basically to sense danger, and sun is for us to see. Unfortunately, we are not able to see the clear, very clear entrance to our left. So and there's danger coming from below. Which has given us the time to do all of this stuff, but we can't really cast Zen because it requires a thing. Uh, hover in the air, that, that probably would be good, but unfortunately I can't. Um, and we can't really cast anything else over here because we just have Fall. So, we have Sus over here and Sun, which we have both cast. So nothing really going on here. Uh, we have, the only thing that's le left is a Fireball. And that's gonna be three stamina gone away. You cast a spell, creating a flaming, uh, blazing blizzard, which fills the well shaft with light so brilliant that it takes your eyes a moment to adjust. When they see smarting, you see you are on a ledge that covers the wall, ha the wall, well shaft, and in the wall you see a tunnel mouth receding into the distance. The fireball fizzles, and die, and goes out. Oh no! No way! I that's the first thing I cast. I cast the sun right there. No way. I'm gonna re I'm gonna rewind this. First time ever, guys. I'm gonna rewind my game a little bit. Just a little bit. Let's see where we are. We're gonna be up. No, we're gonna be over here. Yeah. Do you wish to rewind? Yes, I, w I wish. There we go. So we're gonna take the coin, as we did before, and uh, we're gonna climb. Actually, we shouldn't. We shouldn't. Uh, we shouldn't jump. But since I did that before. Actually, I'm gonna need to cast, uh, yeah, I should probably, I could cast this, I'm, I'm trying to make up for the fact that I'm gonna need to cast a fireball for a spell that's basically free, and it really should let me do this, but I'm gonna call fall, uh, I'm gonna cast fall here, so it's gonna be, it's, I'm gonna lose less, I'm gonna lose less than, uh, than if I just jump, so yeah, uh, step over the ledge, and, yeah, let's do it. You over the ledge, you gently float down. I know about everything. Let's go. And yeah, it's basically just me making up for the game, not letting me... I still took damage! Oh, that's not right. Come on. Really? Okay, I'm go just gonna fall then. If that's what you want. Yes, yes. If that's what you want, I'm just gonna fall. So take the coin there, look down the well, and... Uh, drop the count... Cron Climb down further. That's the one. Drop down. Then you fall. And I go down there. And the whale is now our god. And there we go. A little bit better. Of course, the coin is gone. No, I got the coin back. You hit the ledge below. Your gold piece is by your feet. You pocket it once more. Around you, the well shaft is pitch black. It is impossible to tell if this ledge covers the wall width of the shaft or if there is another drop inches away. Yeah, there is. Uh, let's fill the walls, see if we can do anything. Moving carefully, not wanting to lose your foot on the ledge, you feel across the stone. The walls are cool, solid, and damp. But then you find the edge of a brick. Above it, another. Below it, the same. Stones in the wall of this well have been removed. A tunnel mouth has been created. Let's make a move then. You cannot sit here forever and starve. Okay, that's a little bit better than before when we cast the, su the sus. I think we are at the same point when we cast the sus because we can cast the sus and, and be fine. Of course, we can pray for the well, which would be nice, but this is a little bit less. The game was trying to cheat me out of my health. So yeah, that was really, really bad because I was down to six. I was gonna die for sure. But anyway, there we go. The walls of this narrow tunnel are hewn rock. You can feel the harsh groves, or grooves rather, of uh, pickaxes and shovels as you trace your fingers over the surface. The work of dwarves, perhaps? Or maybe these tunnels are older than Carrie itself. The way slopes gently downwards into pitch darkness. You inch your way forward. Uh, stride forwards. There's things coming from the back, so I'm gonna stride forwards. You stride forwards, this tunnel might be long, and if you are going to see where it leads, you should take, you should make progress. Uh, let's stride forwards again. Oh boy. 
I can't, I can't do anything right now. I could pray for healing, but I can't cast a spell while midway. You stride forward and suddenly your foot is in space. And before you can react, you are falling. The sewer floor. Lovely. Lovely. Let's see how much damage. Ow! That hurt. You land with a shock in a pool of cool, greasy water, legs tangled up beneath your body. Picking yourself to your feet, you try to ignore the terrible smell that now covers your clothes. Let's cast this right there. Okay, that was really bad, actually. That was really, really bad. I thought the game was gonna... <sighs> but this time I'm not rewinding, because I only did that because I thought the game was... I felt that the game was cheating me. I hope you agree. And if you don't, well, I'm sorry, but, well... You know, so rewind is one of the features of the game. If you're playing this game by yourself, I highly suggest you rewind all the time and just look where you go. Even then, you're going to have to play the game like three or four times to figure out all the different things. Especially with all the with all the uh, the, the four parts and all of that. And yeah, I'm definitely going to do that, but uh, yeah. F for right now, we're just having an adventure. And that should be okay. It should be okay. And if we die, I mean, we can already try. So let's see. Where am I? You stand in a cavernous sewer tunnel, filled knee-deep with slow-flowing, stench-filled water. It is pitch black. You could you could be standing on a mountaintop or inside a coffin. Except that it is for a single speck of light somewhere in the far distance. Hmm. That's really not good. I don't feel like that a, a single speck of light is good. This place is really terrible and really, really dangerous. I am gonna make a move. Tunnels disappear off into darkness. Hide. That really doesn't feel like a good plan. Uh, towards the... Uh, but then again, I don't know where the light is. I might be able to hide. Might need to cast a spell, though. I do have the shadow, if, if it works. You duck into an alcove in the wall of the tunnel. In the distance, you hear the marching feet of c coming closer. You wait, and within a few moments, the tunnel is filled with goblins. There are not one or two, but a whole army led by a tall, stocky elder goblin and chanting a weird gu guttural song. Let's stay low. They march straight up to where you are, crouching in the dark. A hundred, maybe two hundred of, of the creatures. What are they doing here beneath Carrie? Inside the city walls? I don't want to. I don't want to mess with them. I mean, if I jump out, they're probably gonna take me somewhere or something. I don't want that. I want to explore this place. You wait in tense silence as the goblins march part past your hiding place. At the rear are two goblin generals. How many more soldiers does the Mad King want? The first asks the second as they pass your position. Thousands. The second replies, then spits. But he'll get what he gets. That he will. The first agrees, testing his blade on his thumb. Two, the two walk on, still talking in muttering voices. The Mad King. Huh, let's make a move. The goblins are tramping away up the sewer. I've got one new clue. Huh, let's look at our clues here. So, uh, the goblin army. In tunnels under carry, an army of goblins are massing for attack. Let's steal their stuff. If... The whale is gonna let me, of course. So we could follow the goblins, or we could go back where they came from. And I would say that coming from where they came from might be a better way, because this thing looks to be... They're going... Where are they going? This thing looks to be a dead end, actually, but what is this? I don't know. There's no way... There. It's a decision that I must make right now. And I need, I'm going that way, because I want to go up the other, up the other well. So let's do this thing. You turn and head the other way down the sewer. The way seems to, be, to continue on into infinite darkness, but these goblins must have come from somewhere. Yes, they must have. There is nothing else for it. You strike off along the sewer, hoping to find a way out. It is impossible to tell how much time has passed. In the world above, perhaps the sun has gone down and the stars have come out. But down here, all that you know is that the people of Carey are still throwing their slops into the grates. The water underfoot stinks, and the ducts above your head rain with thick filth. That's very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Let's go. You reach a junction of two sewers, one way sealed by grating. Okay. Um, it's two sewers. That's that one and this one. And that's what he means. So we could go that way or this way. I would say that this one looks a little bit better. But also looks a little bit filthier because it's got an entrance from over here. But then again, this can't be sh this can't be black water or gray water. Uh, black water, I think it's the name of that. Gray water would be uh, just water that's used for cleaning and all this sort of stuff. Black water is the one that, you know. Anyway, uh, I think I'm going that way. This can't be black water. So, I mean, it can. 
But I'm going that way because it could be like a river and I could drink from it or something. Or at least it's gonna or I could bathe. Uh, let's see. You splash on through the water when suddenly your foot strikes something. The base of another wooden ladder sticking, sitting in a fork. Let's test it. You give the ladder a sharp tug to test its strength. The whole thing comes away in rotten splinters which rain down into the water like so much slurry. There's no choice but to move on. If you keep walking for long enough, this tunnel must come out on the other side of the wall of carry. The goblins must have entered somehow. Oh, we're going outside? I'm not going there, I'm going this way. Yeah, so it's a good thing we didn't go down that, that ladder. Huh, a thundering sound announces water nearby. The sewer fork's here. So it could go that way, or it could go this way, to the water. That's gonna be really bad. I'm gonna need to cast a spell for that for sure. Let's go up this way, which is probably gonna be really bad, but I don't know what the game is gonna give me, so it seems more interesting. Uh, you make your way along the sewer. In the distance, you hear a dull groaning sound. Well, get your sword ready, man. Just get your sword ready. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You emerge into a small chamber where a needy pool of sewage has collected. The liquid is bubbling, and as you watch, a shape rises from the water. It is the smooth hide of a slime eater. It roars, gobbing slime and goo at you. Oh no! Uh... Let's fight! Oh! You draw your sword, which seems a mere toothpick compared to the size of the creature. Then you close in for the kill. Okay, so it's, it's throwing stuff at me, although I don't know how powerful I need to go at first so that one right there I'm trying to figure out I think actually so I can go up there so that's the limit right there so this one is just below that line right there it's over here so that means it's right there you can't attack more than that so I'm gonna go for eight eight point one nice really nice really really nice the slime eater growls at you filth and fetid waste spilling from between its blubbering lips killing it quickly will be your best chance of avoiding losing your last meal you swing your sword in a mighty arc the slime eater skulks in the water then rises up and charges you drop chopping into its body cutting it deeply it drops under the water almost out of sight uh that's for a defense i guess i mean it has to be right Let's go with a jab here. It has to be. It has to be. I might be a little bit greedy with doing this. Oh, come on. Let, let it be. Let it, I'm going to look it over here. Hell yeah. Hell yeah was the defense. Okay, good. Sidestepping, you slash out at the slime eater. Low in the water, the monster escapes The monster escapes mostly unharmed. It grunts at its slinks back. It begins to lift its bulk out of the water, sending ripples down the sewer. Uh, I don't think it's going to be more... It's going to do more than six. Although it might. Let's see what happens. Oh, that was close. I, yeah, yeah, it would be kind of hard for it to do much more than that. But let's see. Rushing forward, you charge at the slime eater, catching it as it rears up. You plunge your sword deep into its blubbery hide. The slime eater lifts up from the water, then crashes back down. Bits of its body bub bubbling and boiling. Okay, the slime eater lifts up the from the water and crashes back down. So that is going to be either... I don't know what that is gonna be. Uh, should I risk it? Sli lifts up from the water and crashes back down. Why would he do that? Is that it, its attack? No, 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 no. Okay, so rushing, you try to slam it, catching it as it rears up. That's its attack right there. You plunge your sword deep into its blubbery hide. Okay, so that's the attack phase done. And this is what he's doing right now, which is a slow attack. So I'm gonna go with that one. Oh, it was a defense, damn it. Yeah, I was greedy. Standing firm, you swing a mighty blow at the slime eater, but you cannot swipe through the water with enough power to hurt the monster. Uh, the slime eater staggles, staggers backwards into the filthy water, screaming and howling. The water around the move, uh, the monster begins to move. Okay, I'm gonna defend here. That was a good move. Oh man, that thing is hideous. You can almost smell the creature growing enraged and duck quickly backwards through the sewer. You are not a moment too soon, emitting a foul gobbet of filth from between its blubbery lips. The slime eater thumps forward, hoping to pull you apart. It disappears into the sewer, almost invisible. That's a small attack right there. I'm gonna go with the 1.8. Yeah, that was a defense, I mean, not a small attack, a defense. You attack the creature. Fainting left, you slice at the slime eater, sunk in the filth. The slime eater escapes your sword. It growls and it slides back through the water. It's gonna be another defense, but it's gonna die. Oh, that was so close! <laughs> that was so close right there! 
Did you see that? Two oh my god! That was really close, but there we go. Very nice. Splashing through the mud. I would be. I would have been so salty. I mean, so filthy. That's terrible. <sighs> Splashing through the mud, you raise into the slime eater. The slime eater roars up, exposing a soft area beneath its chin. It has a chin? You wouldn't think it had a chin, but yeah, it does. You strike with your sword, and it sinks in deep, bringing a fountain of thick green ooze, and then silence. That was, I think, that was really good. That was really, it's not, it, it wasn't an easy fight, all things considered. I mean, if I wanted to save some stamina. The body of the slime eater sinks down into the muck. Past the slime eater's lair is another tunnel. So it was its lair. I don't think we're going to fight anybody else down here, but let's figure it out. Further on, the sewer ends, and a walkway opens to the right. You step gratefully out of the filth and muck into a, lo a low tunnel. I hope we're going to be able to take a bath. A dead end? Can you, could you guys hear that? The, the beating sounds of heart? Uh, yeah, the heartbeats, I mean. You arrive in a dead-end passageway, but there is light here, shining from above. You look up to see a wall, a hole in the roof of the sewer, and even better, there is a rope with a bucket hanging from the gap. You have found a disused well. Let's test the rope. You cannot believe your luck. Down here in the dark, you have been close to thinking you might never ex escape. So you test the rope first, expecting it to come free at the slightest tug. But it does not. It holds secure and firm. The climb will be long, but it will be safe. Well, that's good. Reassured, you start to climb. The first few feet are wonderful. Filth runs... Wonderful? Filth runs down... Runs clear from your legs, but the rest of the climb is long and makes for hard work. Well, apparently, we're halfway up right now. And the... Well, the heartbeats. Halfway up, you stop for a rest. Then I lost one stamina and another one. You continue to climb. It takes maybe half an hour or of inching your way up the rope, but eventually you reach the top. You are indeed climbing out through a well into the open air. You take a deep lungful, expecting crisp, fresh air, but what you get is stale and dusty. Where are you now? Well, I think I know exactly where I am because we looked at that when we were... Oh. What? Where are we going? I thought we were... Go Anyway, you have emerged from the sewers into a wide area of tall trees and short headstones, surrounded by a tall iron work fence, overgrown with ivy and gripweed. You are in the necropolis of Carrie, its city of the dead. The sun is beating to set uh, already behind the city wall to the north. You must be close to the gate now. Okay, then we could go up there, or we could go down here, which is exactly where I'm going, because I need a, a spell. Oh man, this is going to be tough. I don't think we have the spell. What is the game going to do? Is it, I, am I going to fail? I might fail. I hope not. But it's very possible that we do. I mean, I I remember all the fighting fantasy books that I played, they all had fail conditions. Like, you would reach the end, you wouldn't be able to kill the final boss, or you wouldn't be able to figure the last secret, and you would just have a fake ending, or sort of like an ending where... And then you go, you go off to your own life, or whatever, or somebody pays you money and there you go you couldn't figure out this or couldn't figure out that and those were always so terrible but they also made you replay the game and i'm gonna be fine if i need to replay through this but especially now that i know all the stuff but if i need to replay i'm gonna rewind if i need to do it on camera i'm gonna rewind to let you guys see all the things and all that sort of stuff because that's also interesting and i i do want to i don't want my second run on camera to be uh to be st stupid and i don't want to look uh, uh i mean to be uh <clears throat> excuse me fruitless and I don't want to look up a uh, walkthrough, so yeah, that's... The wind whistles between the tall trees. The sun is setting behind the wall. Let's look around the gravestones. You step nervously off the path and walk between the nearest tombs. Some are ancient, headstones tilted to crazy angles, and some of them fallen face down, as though the citizen citizens of this graveyard have been drinking since they died. Others are fresh, neatly carved and clean of all moss and weeds. They sparkle in the moonlight, as though cleaned by maids and waiting for their occupants to arrive. That's very reassuring. I like that. So we have explore the older tombs or explore the newer tombs. I would guess the newer tombs is probably going to be where the guy is, but we are going to need to go there anyway. Let's see. They are, uh, there are several tombs here. There must have been a recent plague on the rich in the city. They are scattered around in roughly alphabetical groups. So I am... Okay. So I don't really have... I don't know any of these guys. Anagail to Farat. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, the tombs of Anagail to... Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. So in that case, I'm going to look at my clues because I have a name. Shimva. 
Of course, it might be just his last name, in which case I'm really not going to be able to do anything. So, S, I am an OP. Q R S S D. Yeah, there it is. Oxal to Tamarin. Let's go. You look from one headstone to another. If you catch your eye, though, you cannot immediately say why. Well, Shiva's mausoleum. That's the one. You approach Shiva's mausoleum. Carved above its door. Uh, above its door is here rests Lord Shiva, fifth noble of Kare. Your heart hammers. It is the undead noble you were warned you would need to find. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. So let's go on in. Shiva's mausoleum. Oh, and there it is, the heartbeat. The door to Shiva's mausoleum seems to be unlocked and is a crack ajar, uh, as though someone regularly came and went. Just in front of it is a ring of little mushrooms growing up against the front step of the mausoleum. Let's look at the ring. You crouch down to look at the mushrooms. They look highly poisonous, not least because you cannot see a single insect crawling around or any or under any of them. Unusually, the ring itself is also perfectly circular in shape. In its center, something silver glints, a stake pushed into the soft soil. I'm going to take the silver stake here. A should I? Yes, I should. I also have a silver chain, which is... My, which might be used against these guys. Let's see what happens. You reach over to pull out the silver stick, but you cannot reach it without stepping inside the mushroom ring. Something about that gives you pause, but you cannot tell why. Um, I could cast... The Foth? But is it worth it? I can't cast a Foth. Let's see what we have. Buzz? It sense danger? Or sus, rather. I thought it was a bee. It's not. I thought I clicked on a B, but we have bus. No, damn it! I don't have bus. What the hell? It's a B. It's it's a B right there. What is that one? Big. Oh, that way I could reach for it. Actually, that that's a good one. What about the mag? That's magical defense. That's pretty good as well. Let's see what we have. We have tell, which I think it is to read minds. Yes, we don't have the skull cap, unfortunately. I wonder where it is. It must be in the first game. Uh, and then we have nothing else. I'm gonna go with a big one. I should be able to reach the thing just by growing big, and I love this spell. There we go. You cast the spell and feel yourself inflating to three times your normal size. There is no way you'll be able to fit inside the mausoleum building. But we'll be able to take the silver stake. Using our extended height, you lean over the circle of mushrooms, careful not to touch them or the ground below. You draw the stake out of the ground. It is a short sword made, it would appear, of pure silver. It is too cold to stand still in the shadows of the wall. Okay. But I can go into the tomb now. Which, uh, because the, the spell has disappeared. You step into the tomb. Oh boy. We have the stake. We have a short sword. We have a silver. Oh, this is really good, actually. A minus three. What is that for? Is it the damage it does? It probably is, but let's see. It's a letter. Or stairway, I mean. Once you are small once more, you step into the hush of the crypt. The air inside is freezing. Dust coats the floor. Urns line the walls. But there is no coffin. The floor space is empty, except for in the far corner where a narrow stone staircase leads down into the darkness. I am going to cast the uh, lightning sp lighting spell that I always forget. Because I can cast it all the time, I think. Or maybe I can't. Uh, that's sap. No, that's for um, cause depression. I, it's not a depression on the floor, so I don't think it is going to be important. We have sun. That's the one. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Hopefully it's going to work. If it's not, I'm going to reload or rewind. You cast the spell. Actually, I don't need to because this thing doesn't cost anything and I can cast it on however many times I can. I want. Uh, you cast the spell and the sun jewel in your back begins to throw an ebb, growing brighter and brighter until it fills the room with a pale but brilliant light that reveals the mausoleum for what it is. Old stone and dust. Nothing worse than that. Your spirit soars. That's fantastic. Make a move then. Skulls peer at you from the walls. Uh, that's not as fantastic. Turn and flee. Ah! I would turn and, and, and leave. And afraid of what you might find below, you make your way towards the stairs. But you must have stepped on some kind of switch as behind you, you hear a noise. And you turn to see the door is swinging shut. Let it close. You stay back, not wanting to be crushed by the heavy stone door. It seals with a bang. In the dark. Well, I can... Oh, I can pray for healing. I am going to pray for healing. Thank you very much. Uh, in the dark. I can't really go down there. But I can cast... A, I think I can cast... No, I can't do... I can, oh, I can cast from here, right? Yeah, okay. Well, let's go over there. 
and see if I can if I need to cast a spell. The echo of the slamming door circles the room. Your light forms a pool around your feet. Um, uh, mm -hmm. let's cast it again the sun. Unless, of course, it does... It does use up itself, but I don't think it does. Sun right there. Yeah, we can cast this however many times we want, which is fantastic. You cast the spell again, and the sun jewel pulses cheerfully in return. But it doesn't do anything. Fill the door for hatches. You go over to the door, running your fingers, uh, your fingers around the edges of the stone, hoping to uncover a hidden hatch. But it seems out whoever made this trap didn't want their prisoners to escape. You find nothing. Okay, let's make a move. Something rushes across your boots and into a crack in the stone. Yeah, we're going down the stairs, but we're doing it next episode because we're running out of time. So, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Sorcery. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video. But above all, thank you so much for watching and for being with me in this fantastic adventure. I hope I will see you next episode. Uh, but if you don't, well, the videos are going to be up. Anytime you want to see them, you can come back and see them. But I'll be there tomorrow for the next episode. Bye-bye.